Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I am Barry Rowland, and in this episode, we'll be reviewing the R20 Racing Steering Wheel from Turn Racing. This wheel has some tweaks and improvements over the original R1 wheel, which is still a very good wheel option from Turn Racing. Time to put it through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. Now for our Closer Look segment for the Turn R20 Racing Wheel. First off, I usually don't do unboxing videos or unboxing during my videos, but I just wanted to show you how this wheel actually comes. If you saw the review I did on the Turn Racing Aston Martin Vantage wheel, I had already taken the plastic off of that one. And yeah, it's nice when you open the box and you see what you get here. You know, it's little custom bits that you get from custom wheel makers. First off, cool box, I must say. It's got the nice logos on it. Got the made in a USA. And we'll go ahead and just get this wheel out. Comes with a sticker. And, oh, we got a metal brush. And that, I imagine, is for the suede. You see in these wheels over here. Keep the suede right. And it's just steel. And the usual Momos or brushes you get for suede, they have these rubber things on it. And they do have the steel inserts in this brush on this side. But they got these little rubber pieces on it that will get into places that a regular brush can't. But it's nice that he includes a brush to try to keep your suede in tip-top shape. Right. So, let's go ahead and see. This is like a bag foam thing. Alrighty. And there it is. So that's how you get your wheel. <laughs> it's sealed up in plastic, which is actually a pretty good idea. It doesn't get... You know, dust particles and things like that on it during shipping from the cardboard or whatever shipping that any wheel maker might include. And yeah, it's just a nice custom touch, I think. So let's go ahead and just get this off. And this is the fun part you get to rip it off, get your wheel. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Put the box away. All right, so here's the new R20 wheel. And as you might notice, it looks a lot like the R1 wheel. Because, well, the R1 wheel is a very successful wheel for turn racing. And I've used this. This is actually one of my favorite wheels that I've been using for quite a time, quite a long time, rather, with my medium Martin Asher button plate attached to it. And this one is actually, a, a it's the same grip as this. Yeah, maybe, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it just feels a little bit... Well, it looks like the exact same grip. I guess they feel about the same to me. It's hard. Maybe, just maybe, there's a little, there's a little bit less of a, a hump in this part of it than it is here. I think that's what I'm feeling. But it's very, very close. It's like I say. It's other than that, you never tell the difference on it. And yeah, so we've got a nice suede wrap on here. That obviously, all this stuff is done in house by. Zach over at Turn Racing. And we've got some nice rounded caps on the top there. Now, another, there's a couple of differences here as far as why he changed this wheel. One of them is, if you take one of these medium Martin Asher button plates, I got a couple of them here to use for samples, or examples. And yeah, you put this in this R1 wheel, and it's a pretty tight fit. Let's see, get the holes lined up. There they are. Tell you what, what I'm going to do, instead of just try to have a shaky lineup on my holes, I'll just go ahead and run some screws in there to hold it where it needs to be. One on top, one on bottom. Should do it. There we go. All right. So it's got some room down here, but it looks like more room than it is <laughs> when I'm looking at the video monitor here. But yes, it's a pretty tight fit, and you would never get the large button plate in here. In fact, I don't need my screws for that demonstration. These holes do line up. In fact, I could actually put a screw in here. And we'll put a screw over here. And you see the holes are lining up, but on the bottom here, it is like just, it's, it's actually contacting the wheel, which is really not any good. Not only that, but there's no space to get your, your thumb in here. And up here, it's very tight. My knuckle's actually hitting this. So yeah, the large is just too big for, obviously, the R1. And we always knew that. And 
Now, let's get the screws out of this R1. We'll hold this large up to the R20. Get my fingerprints off of it. And this is going to fit quite differently because of the different design of the hub section. There we go. So now you see we have the clearance around this button plate. And when you're using the wheel, yeah, my thumb is not all cramped up if I have to put it here. I have plenty of room up here when I put my thumb in. So yeah, this is, this is the way you'd rather have a button plate fit. Now, just to throw a wrench in those works, let's see what the medium looks like, which is probably what I'm going to be using. And at least using for the demonstration. Let's see, let me drop this in here. Sometimes you get these screws just to go in all by themselves, like that. And actually, the medium fits very well, too. In fact, it gives me even more room to maneuver. And I'm still, let me kind of push this around here so I can see. It's hard to do this without it being bolted down. Yeah, I've still got good room for the clutches and the shifters. And yeah, plenty of room on the medium here. Actually, this is probably the one I'm going to use. But then again, it's all personal preference because I got plenty of room now here, more room than I had. It always did feel just a little cramped on the R1, but not enough to make me not use it because it's, you know, the grips are really like the grips on these on these wheels that turn racing is making here. And yeah, so I'm probably just going to end up running the medium in here. So we've got a change here as far as this, the way these spokes are done, of course, and there is a little bit of difference in the actual, I think you can see it. I don't know how well it's going to show up actually, but you should see, well, they're doggone close. They're pretty close there, I have to say. But you can see the difference in the spokes. See the, you know, if I turn around front ways, you can see the back one shadowing these spokes. If I measure them out to precisely, as far as the diameters go, the original R1, and I'm putting it flush with the side of the wheel here, all right, is really about 297, I would say. About 297, not quite 300. And the new one, Again, I'm going flush on this other side, so I look down and it's edge of this ruler is flush with the very outside of the grip. This one is actually 305. I think he's calling this a 310 though, but it's a 305 in my measurement here. So I'm two and a half millimeters, well, maybe a little bit more than that. Not very much wider, and, it, and you can tell when you're holding it, it doesn't feel that much wider. It, and when you're twisting it, I can't tell. Yeah, there's a little, there's a little bit more twist in this one than there is in this one. And that, that new thicker plate is doing its job quite well. All right, this might actually replace my R1. I don't know. Even though the R1, I still like it. You know, It's hard to make up your mind. Oh, and yeah, one more thing about this. There is a little bit of difference in the grip here. And I noticed that when I was handling it. See that here on the R1 here, there's like actually this, this lump, okay? Right in here, where it kind of fits. See where, that, see where your hand is there? And then there's a little contour right there. There we go. See it against the white shirt there. So that contour fits the bottom hand, and I like that, right? This doesn't have that, right? The contour is no longer there. Not that, <laughs> I mean, there's a little bit. Actually, if you can see right there, it's, it's coming down a little bit right in there. So it's less contour. It's not like there's none. But yeah, I think it's a little bit more pronounced on the R1. And, you know, this is one of those things that's completely subjective. You don't know <laughs> what you're going to like or not like until you use it. Until I can get this mounted and actually running with it, then I won't know if I'm going to use this one over the R1. But I have to say, I like what Turn Racing has done with this. Zach has listened to other people and seen the different button plates coming out, especially the newer ones, and make sure that now we have a wheel that'll fit certainly will fit a medium, Asher. Now, I don't have other button plates to compare them to. Like, yeah, I wish I did, but I just don't. And so, yeah, this fits the Asher medium and large we know. And I don't think the newer Asher ones have changed as far as too much on the dimensions, but of course they're different the way they're made with aluminum fronts now and things like that and aluminum shifters and things. So hopefully I'll have a 
USB 64 in here to review and, and we'll be able to see the differences. Anyway, as far as the, you know, the way the builds are. But yeah, this seems to be a good move up or evolution, if you will, of the R1 wheel. And I really like the thicker metal in here because as you know, in SRG, we're all about things being as stiff as possible so we can get as much tactile feedback up to a point. I think the only thing I've ever found that I didn't think it should be completely stiff is like an aluminum body shifter with an aluminum paddle on it. It seemed like it's so stiff and crisp that it almost, it, it tends to wear, at least me, you know, when I'm actually using it long, long term, I'd rather have some kind of a dampening on that and that would be like a carbon, uh, a carbon paddle on the shifter. But then again, I digress. <laughs> so, so far, this looks great. I mean, the, the wrap job is nice on it. I don't see any defects anywhere. It's, and again, it's not easy to do this kind of work. If you guys have ever tried to lay some leather on a wheel rim, you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, all we have to do now is, I think I'm just going to go with the medium button plate, get everything put together, and yeah, we'll see what it looks like when we come back. Now we have the wheel mounted up to the button plate. We've got our cool turn racing carbon fiber hub cover there. I always like that. And yeah, as far as the fit goes for my hands, feels really good. Everything is still pretty much feels the same, actually. I don't feel a whole lot of difference between this and my R1. Except for overall, I think it has a, a bit more of a stiff feel to it. And again, I think that can be attributed to the thicker aluminum he's now using in the spoke area. Even though we've taken some metal and removed that from the spoke area, it still uh, does a great job, I think, in hand anyway. And of course, the litmus test will be hooking up to the rig and taking it for a drive and yeah, see what we think while we're driving it. So yeah, everything is good, ready to go. And when we come back, we'll actually be driving it and making some comments. All right, now for a quick look at the R20 now that it's mounted. I think it's looking good there. And we are going to be running this on the Sim Steering 2 wheel system with the 54G Cole Morgan motor. And you can see we have it mounted to the Zero Play Quick Release system, which we're also reviewing. And yeah, I think it's looking good there. I kind of, it's kind of growing on me the smaller spokes that we have on this as far as concerning comparing this rather to the R1 wheel and of course being that thicker aluminum plate I expect it to be a firmer experience when we're actually in and driving it which is what we're gonna do next so here we are at Sebring and yeah this is obviously a great place to test this wheel and the stiffness of it and we're in the Lotus 79, a nice bumpy, tight suspension or stiff suspension vehicle. And yeah, so taking a little abuse here. I've got everything turned up on the Cole Morgan motor. And yeah, just to put as much stress as I can on this wheel to see the differences. And the thing is, I actually ran the R1 before I ran the R20, just so I could get a good feel for that in the same track, same car. In fact, I just switched them out and got right back in. And when you're looking for the differences, there is some differences in between that five millimeter plate and the four millimeter aluminum plate. As you might imagine, the five mil is stiffer, and which means that you get a little bit more fine detail through this steering wheel than I do on the R1 Pro, which, and it's not much, don't get me wrong, it's not much, but you can feel the difference if you're looking for it and you're switching between the wheels. Otherwise, if you had like had the R1 before and sold it and got the R20, I seriously doubt you'd be able to tell the difference. It's, it's that close, but it's, again, a thicker plate obviously is going to be stiffer. Even with the thinner spokes that are going on either side of the wheel, it's still you know, noticeably different as far as the firmness goes when you're switching in between both of them. And we also went over to the ring, another favorite course of mine, which is a bit smoother than Sebring. Not to say that ring doesn't have its Sebring-like bump sections here and there, but it's pretty smooth in a lot of places. Just to get the differences, again, between the R1 Pro and the R20, and again, especially here, it was hard to tell the difference, except for, you know, the grip being different as far as the grip diameter being a little bit smaller on the R20 versus the R1. But 
Yeah, as far as the stiffness goes, I, I was hard pressed to pick it up. But when I hit bumps, I could I could feel it there. But for the most part, so on, on courses like this, I don't know how well you'd be able to tell the differences again if you weren't switching in between them. But yeah, the R20 is doing a very good job here, as I imagined it would. You know, Zach over at Turn Racing just, just turns out very good wheels, all custom hand-built stuff. And yeah, you know, it shows when you're actually using his stuff. And the suede on here is really nice. You know, it's a nice uh, pattern to the suede. I've seen some suede that were just kind of strange looking as far as uh, they were just too too small as far as the the fibers on the suede. It was, was kind of hard to explain, but this feels like a, a Momo suede or an OMP suede or, you know, those kind of suede that you're used to feeling on normal production type of racing uh, car wheels. Right. So again, there's not a whole lot I can show you here as far as yeah, the, um, you know, the wheel, it's just a wheel. So we're not, you know, testing anything else except basically the grip. And, oh, by the way, the, the fatigue factor is also something important. And, yeah, I, I had no issues at all going very long stints with this wheel. And, yeah, so no cramps in the, in the fingers or wrist or hands. And, yeah, really no fatigue at all. No, beyond the normal fatigue <laughs> I get from using a direct drive force feedback wheel at the higher forces. Right, so what we'll do is, yeah, we'll just bounce on over to the final thoughts. And yeah, I'll let you guys watch me drive a little bit more here if you're interested in that. Otherwise, I will see you in the final thoughts segment. Final thoughts on the new R20 racing wheel from Turn Racing. It's good to see that Zach is paying attention to his user feedback on his wheels and implementing changes where he thinks they will do the most in improving the user experience. This is quite evident in the R20's result, now using a 5mm thick aluminum plate for the wheel's center section. It has added a stiffer feel when in use over the previous R1 wheel, which uses a 4mm thick plate. And as you may already know by watching my videos, 
the SRG is always looking for sim racing hardware with the least amount of flex possible. Now, the bottom wheel spoke is just a bit longer, and the side spokes have these new thinner profiles. These changes allow more room in the wheel for larger button plate designs. I was able to fit both the medium and large sized Asher Racing button plates into this wheel with no problems. With the R1, I was only able to fit the medium sized button plate. Now, having more options for button plate selection is always a good thing. The grips on the R20 are just a bit smaller in diameter than the R1. It is noticeable when switching back and forth between the two wheels. And really, I could go either way here. So this change does not have very much impact on the overall feel between them. Of course, how a wheel's grip feels, well, couldn't be a much more subjective topic, I think. <laughs> and the only way to know if you will like the way a grip feels is, well, to try it yourself. Now, the suede leather wrap on the R20 is well done, and all of this is done by hand on each wheel produced, which is no easy task. If you've ever tried to do this yourself, you know what I mean. <laughs> I have no problems with fatigue or cramps in my hands when using the R20 to race. Even on the longer stints, no problems. Now, I'm torn a bit here between the R1 and the R20, but I think the thicker aluminum plate used on the R20 center section may be the deciding factor for me personally. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.